Igbo groups form a coalition as their quest for South president or Southeastern president continues. And a new electoral act demands political parties to run primaries six months before general elections. This is Plus Politics and I am Marianne O'Conn. Campaigners for the 2023 presidency from the Southeast Zone have formed a coalition to carry on their inquest for a Southeastern president after the incumbent president, Muhammad Buhari. They say the coming together would help them to continue to mobilize and sensitize the polity until every zone accepts that it's, it is the turn of the Southeast to rule the country. Members of the coalition include Southeast for Presidency 2023. Um, Igbo National Council, INC, Pan-Nigerian Presidency of Igbo Extraction, pan Piek, and Ohanezi Youth Council, OIC. Of course, the Coalition of All Nigerian Support Groups, CNSG. Now, joining us to have this very interesting conversation is political analyst Francis Chilaka and immediate past president Ohanese Ndigo of FCT chapter Odozi Mwodozi. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Welcome. Thank you very much, Mayor. All right. So, I mean, the question on everybody's minds right now is how ready, because there's been a, a call for Igbo presidency several, several years ago, and, and the call continues to come. But the question is how ready are the Southeast and the Ndivos for this quest for presidency in 2023. Can you really say that you are ready? I'll start with you, Mr. Odozi. Um, thank you, my sister. The issue of uh, the presidency come 2023, after the tenure of the incumbents, President Muhammad Buhari comes to an end, coming to the Southeast, has been something that has been on the burner for at least for the past 20 years. Since the coming of this present republic in 1999, there was a strong push by the Igbo via the strong campaign launched by the late Vice President Alexei Kuhn. In that push, he was almost there until something on the coming happened at the just convention of the People's Democratic Party that saw the emergence of President Olusegun Obasanjo. Having said that, fast forward to 2023, the quest for a Nigerian president of Igbo extraction have brewed so much controversy, both within and without the Igbo nation across the Nigerian, other, other ethnic tribes in Nigeria. Igbos are making inroads, trying to build bridges, trying to build friendship, trying to get the assurances of those people that come 2023, they should all come into this stream of allowing the evil people produce the president of Nigeria come 2023. How solid are these bridges that you are speaking of, these friendships or these hands of friendships that they're extending? How solid are they? And, and, and um, how good and trustworthy are these, um, you know, alliances that the Igbos are making? Mr. Modosi, can you hear me? I think we lost you. Let's take it to Francis. Francis, you obviously also are from the uh, Southeast Extraction. How do you feel about this quest and the move by these coalitions coming together uh, to ask and seek for an Igbo presidency? Um, I, I need to correct an impression to start with before I go further. Um, I don't believe that there's anything called Igbo presidency. What I believe is a Nigerian president of the South East extraction. It, it makes it more clearer that we understand what we're talking about. There has not been anything like a Yoruba presidency or Hausa presidency. You know, so when you bring it to the level of say Igbo presidency, you are whittling down the whole 
power, the whole essence of presidency in Nigeria. We are the, the impulse of the Southeasterners and Nigerians. So what we're saying is that we want a Southeastern president from the Igbo extraction. That is the point I want to make. Well, I feel, yes, it is time because uh, um, if you look at what has happened and played out in Nigerian politics since after the Civil War, you'll find out that the Igbos have not completely been integrated into the mainstream of uh, Nigerian politics, especially when it comes to governance. And um, I think it is high time that, because if you look at it, the North has produced the presidency of Nigeria, the Southwest has, so it is, it is, it is justifiable for the Southeast to agitate for it, even though, as we know, power is not given, but power is taken. And it is because of that that we're creating a lot of, we're reaching out to all the regions and making them understand that uh, the, 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 a Southeastern presidency of Igbo extraction would help at this point in time to put Nigeria in a better limelight. Um, the coalition for uh, Southeast 2023 uh, had asked Igbos uh, to get behind its aspirants. Uh, uh, who are, uh, and the question would be, who are these aspirants? Um, because we need to find out if there are people who have declared intentions already from the Southeast to run for this presidency. So ca has anyone at least stated that they're interested and they want to pick a ticket in any of the political parties? Um, well, uh, as I sit here, I will tell you uh, no. But um, it is also a no with a reason because uh, it's not just about featuring anybody to contest for uh, the presidency. What the Southeast wants to do is to put the best of its best to ensure that when we bring out a candidate, it is a candidate that will not only be supported by the voters of the Southeast, but But you must have a pool of people to be able to choose from, right? I mean, yes, you want the best of the best, but there has to be a lot of people who are throwing, um, you know, are putting themselves out there for you to be able to choose from. If we do not have people who are sticking their head out, how can you even choose the best of the best if there are no people to choose from? Right now, it is not that there are no people to choose from. Right now, there are discussions going on. Um, there are a lot of consultations going on. Uh, because um, uh, I will tell you, um, I belong to one of the groups, the Southeast 2023 Presidential Mandate. I'm one of the conveners. And we believe that it is too early to put out somebody there. We want to put out somebody that we know has the character, has the mindset, somebody that Nigerians would appreciate and vote for. Not just anybody. I mean, yes, everybody, anybody can buy the, can you know indicate interest to be a president of Nigeria. But the thing is that, you know, looking at what has happened or what is going on in Nigeria right now, it would not be fair to just throw anybody out there. Yeah, I mean, so for us, we are taking our time, and that is why, you know. When um, the first um, uh, speaker said, he said something, he said, you know, there's a lot of coalition and a lot of reaching out going on. It's, it's all in the, mind, in, the, in the process of getting the best person that the Nigerian people would also appreciate that, yes, whoever the, the South is bringing forward is somebody that has, um, first of all, that has patriotism running in his blood, two, that has something to offer to Nigerians to make Nigeria a better country. Uh, while we wait for um, Mr. Modizzi to come back, let me move to other issues. Um, let's talk about the unity in the Southeast. Um, the coalition also- Hello, I am back. Oh, Mr. Modizzi, you are back. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I'm back. If the quest for the Southeast must succeed, uh, for presidency, obviously, you started by saying that there has been a hand of friendship extended, and of course, no zone in this country can yes. stand on its own to, um, you know, give a, or have a president. You obviously have to make sure that that president is um, someone that is comely to every zone in the country. Um, but how many big wigs? Permit me to use that word loosely here. Um, from the southeast are domiciled in the major political parties in this country. Ones that, it's the same question I asked Chilaka, that you can point to and say these are men of integrity, these are men who have what it takes to pick up these 
uh, tickets, and then maybe at the end of the day, may the best man win. How many of those people can we point to in today's Nigeria? Good. Now, let, let's start with the ruling party. In the ruling party today, which is an all progressive Congress, we have many evil degrees. We have somebody in the person of the current Minister of Science and Technology, in the person of His Excellency Dr. Bunyan. We have the Minister for Labor, Dr. Chris Mabez Nkige. We have the a brilliant young man that is representing us well in the Ministry of Education as a Minister of State, Barrister Chukwemeka Mwajuba, who has distinguished himself in various fields. We have many of them. Don't forget, there are a lot of them that are capable, that have shown their capacity, that have not been dented, that are not stained, that can represent the East, the South East very well. As president or as, bridges as, as across, can they represent, as, the do they have the Nigeria. capacity to be and, uh, president? I don't think we have a shortage of them. Mr. Wadozi, can you hear me? Do they have the capacity? Sir? Because being a leader is totally different. You can be leaders yeah. of thoughts. You can be a leader in your community. They've got the capacity. But then do these people that They've you have named, capacity. do they have the capacity to be president? Are they presidential enough? To convince people across yes, the board. Yes, these people I just called out for you. Yes, they've got the capacity. In the PDP, you have people that are there. Not minding the fact that some people, some evil elites as we speak now, are already conceding to, to go on for something lesser than the president. But I'm sure that in 2022, when they raise up that, their head for that, the people will rise up against them. Because, the, the, look, let me tell you. The case for Igbo presidency will bring an end to the, to the, 66, the, the war of 1967 to 1970. If an Igbo man imagines the president of this country today, that means the end of that civil war. Because whether we like it or not, there is a war of the mind going on within the Nigerian, the Nigerian state now. And until an Igbo man assumes the presidency, presidency of this country, and I mean an Igbo man, I mean an Igbo man from the southeast, that is the time that the healing of Nigeria of the wounds of that civil, of that unfortunate incident will come to an end. It will show a true reconciliation. It will show a time of true reintegration. It will show a, a time of an, a, a warm embrace, an embrace that will signify that, yes, we have agreed that we are one at this time. Talking about healing, let's, let's, let's take it from there. You talked about healing and integration. Let's talk about some of these speculations yes. of things that happen in the Southeast. And you feel free to please correct me if I'm wrong. There are certain people in the Southeast that feel like they're not necessarily Igbos. And I'm guessing that if those same people were to run for presidency, would the whole of the Southeast throw their weights behind them? I'm talking about the people in Ebony State. And, <coughs> and how united are the people in the Southeast? Because we hear also speculations in certain quarters that until the Igbos are united you know, within themselves, they would not be able to convince every other part of the country that they're fit for this quest that they've taken upon uh, themselves. Correct me, I please. I, 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 beg to I beg to disagree with you that the Ebony people are saying they are not evil. The Ebony man, they are called evil. Let me tell you, let me, let me, let, let me take you academically. Professor Angulu Michael Longway Job of Blessed Memory, in one of his thesis, posited, and I quote, that. Agbo, Akibo, and Oweri are the most ancient form of Igbo words. That, that shows you that they are the cradle of the Igbo nation. So you cannot take away a bunch of people from Igbo and say they are not Igbo. However, there are people that you, I thought you were coming from the angle of we, the Igbo's of the South South. We that find ourselves in Delta, we that find ourselves in Rivers. No, we're, we're concentrating you, on the Southeast. You must, we must, we must. We must separate, we must separate geopolitical zones from ethnic nationality. You see, an evil man that falls into rivers, an evil man that falls into Delta states, an evil man that falls into Kogi state in the Baji, an evil man that falls into Akwaibo state from the, from the end of the Blue River, an evil man that falls into Cross River is a South Southerner. By the, by the geographical positioning of the country called Nigeria at the time. So we are talking of the presidency at this time. 
We must differentiate between the presidency going to the evil as a nation and to the to the to the southeast as a geopolitical zone. And once again, we once again, I want to assert Europe. that I'm talking about the southeast. I'm talking about yes. the people that occupy yes. that geopolitical yes. zone. No, 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 no. What is the level of unity? What is the level of unity that cuts is across the people them. in that area? <laughs> it's, it's a lazy mind among them that will say that. Well, are you, are, you, are you denying the person of Sir Francis Akanebian his evilness? Are you denying <laughs> Chief Aja Machitobes in memory his evilness? Are you denying the uh, late Senator of Yamali of his evilness? Are you denying Chief um, um, Polika Puiti of his evilness? Anybody talking about an appointed man not being an evil is not a ground with history. If you are ground with history, you know that the Ebony man is an integral part of the Igbo nation. Yet to no time my has the Ebony man not been part of the Igbo nation. Anyone saying that is just being, is having personal inferiority complex. And that should not be generalized as the agreement or, or the aggregation of the, agre of the position of the Ebony people. The Ebony people are Pure. All right, let's not you dwell on that. Uh, you can't deny that. By let's not dwell on that. I was hoping that you'd answer my question, but I'll throw that same question to Francis. Francis, how united are okay. the Southeasterners right now? Because every other zone might want to produce their own presidential candidate, but as much as the Southeast is screaming for their presidency opportunity, how united, what's, what kind of front are they presenting? Because everybody's watching. Um, you see, when we talk about unity, um, it, it, sometimes I just laugh when people tell me, oh, the Igbos are not united. The Igbos are united. The Igbos, the problem that has been on and that will continue to be among the Igbos is the fact that at every point in time when the Igbos would want to get involved at the highest level of governance in this country, um, they have been pushed aside. And so, the division you're talking about is, I know where you're coming from, but you don't want to say it, is that, oh, some people are saying, we want Biafra. Some people are saying, the truth of the matter is that if you give a chance to a core Southeasterner today to be president, what happened to June 12th will happen to the call for Biafra. Because the Igbos want to be integrated fully into Nigeria. We want to be part and parcel of Nigeria. And the only way you can do that is by giving them a shot at the presidency. It has gone from the north to the southwest, so it is now time for the southeast. In terms of unity in, in, in advocating for this presidency, 2023, the Igbos are united in one voice. Interesting. Quickly, let me just take uh -huh. our minds back to the issue of the recent elections of Ohanese in Igbo. Uh, that ended in some form of a um, deadlock. Although there are people who have said that there is a legitimate president uh, and every other president was, you know, illegal. Uh, these are also some of the things, you know, people would look at and consider if really. Um, because again, let's not forget that the governors of certain states were present at that event. And I remember having some um, leaders from the Southeast on this show talking about you know, the division and the politics that is being played within a social cultural organization. Is this how we, the Southeasterners, intend to play the same politics when it comes to 2023? I'll, uh, Mr. Naduzi, is for you now. Good. Now, to the, to the issue, you know, Hanese. Well, uh, I'll say the Indian past president, Chief John O'Neill, will set a good chart for, for the people after him. Because the process of that election was faulty. If you will know, if you will know, on the 6th of December at the meeting at Nike Lake Resort Hotel, after he announced, after he announced the, the list of the electoral committee, I raised up my hand to speak, but it shut me down. Because I saw there's a lacuna in what he was doing, and that lacuna will be a booby, booby trap of whoever is coming in. Now, you said you sacked the immediate past secretary general. You, the, the constitution says you must convene a meeting of general assembly to ratify that sack. Who would never did that? And now the constitution says that it is the secretary general that will convene meetings. Who would hand over the duties of the secretary general to an administrative secretary? He 
it is a, it's a, it, 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 it is not hard off. So that makes his election, whatever, whatever thing Wudu has done, thanks a nullity. It's unfortunate that a man in the person and the, and the caliber of Ambassador Professor George Obioso emerged the president of, and from that, on that, uh, on quality in Wudu did. But the law, the, 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 the concern is clear, it's explicit. On the other hand, the former Secretary General Richard could set up an electoral committee. You see, the law says that the Secretary General must call a meeting in, con in consultation with the President General. So I think now there is a deadlock, and this deadlock is deliberate. This deadlock is deliberate. How do you push? How do you once again? I'm sounding like a broken record. How do you push again it's, for it's, the? I mean, it, again, if a Southeast presidency, if a social cultural group let me, let me tell you, let me as tell you, big as we yours, we must get ourselves right. We must get ourselves right before the election. You see, if we don't get this right at this point, we might have an issue. But I'll tell you something: the Igbos have a way of settling this matter. Something like this happened in 2006. 2006, that before Ikedi emerged. So it is not we're not new to such. Okay. We don't need to search. Okay. We must solve our problem and we must come out stronger from this. That's the truth. All right. I'm so don't let that bother you. We are fighting it in. We must sort it out and we must come out stronger. Okay, great. Francis, uh, in closing, do we see a lot more people, or will we see a lot more people throwing their hats into the ring as we gear up for 2023? Of course, yes. Yeah, that's definitely a lot of... Um, a lot of people are going to indicate their interest. But like, like I said, and I'll keep saying, uh, it doesn't matter how many people that are showing interest. The bottom line is that at the end of the day, the South Easterners would bring out a formidable candidate of the acceptable for them. Okay. Well, Francis Chilaka is a political analyst and um, uh, Odozi Modozi is the immediate past president of Ohanese Ndibo FCT chapter. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, wish you the best in the coming years. Thank you for being part of this conversation. All right, we'll take a short break. And when we return, the National Assembly has begun the amendment process of the Electoral Act. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, has revealed that the new Electoral Act would require all political parties to carry out their primaries six months before the general election. And of course, this conversation will be joined with the Director of Vulture Education for INIC right after the break. <laughs>